Welcome to the Happiness Podcast. I'm Dr. Robert Puff. Have you ever had a day or a moment where life is just going so well and you can't imagine it being better? And then bang, something happens and our day isn't good anymore. We may see this on our return from vacation. Everything is going well. We had such a nice time. And then when we get back to home and back to life, it just doesn't go well anymore. Our things are smoothly moving along. We're liking our life. We're liking the changes. And then bang, again, something happens. We get that phone call and someone close to us is in the hospital and may be dying. There are just so many instances, both big and small, that can truly affect the happiness that we feel throughout the day. It may even feel like we're on this roller coaster, up and down, back and forth, going all over the place with our emotions based upon what's happening during the day. What if we had a step-by-step method for making our lives better and finding happiness and creating that happiness so instead of going up and down, we find there's an overall sense of well-being? What if we had that blueprint? Well, that's what I'm hoping to present to us today, a blueprint, a step-by-step method for finding and creating happiness in our lives. And it can be amazing sometimes how little it takes to knock us off our well-being and happiness center. Why is that? What's going on here? And how do we get back on track quickly? This step-by-step approach to a happy life, I've broken into six parts. And it's not that the parts are complicated. I just wanted to clearly differentiate each step of finding a happy life. The first step is life changes. Life does not stay the same. When everything's going well and we're happy, that is going to change. It isn't necessarily that we're going to be unhappy, but what's going well may not keep going the same way. And that should make pretty much sense. I mean, if we're on vacation, that vacation is going to end. Or even if we're retired and we have all the time in the world, at some point, we're probably going to have health problems And that may change the way we travel and experience our retirement. Life changes. That's just one of the rules of life. And that's one thing we have to acknowledge. It's just the way life is. Now, in and of itself, these changes don't have to bring about unhappiness. I mean, again, when we're on vacation, there often are a lot of changes, but we enjoy them. The question here is when we're off. Why do we feel off? That's what we want to do. That's the second step to observe that, oh, I don't feel well right now. What's going on? Let's stay with the vacation analogy. Let's say we're on vacation and we wake up one morning and we realize, oh, I don't feel very happy. So we would ask ourselves, why? What's going on here? And that's step three. The third step is thoughts. Thoughts cause us to be off, to not be happy. So what we have to ask ourselves is, what are our thoughts? What am I thinking about now that is causing me to be off? The circumstances external aren't as important because another person in the exact same situation could be and probably might be fine, but we're off. So we have to ask ourselves, what are we thinking about right now that is causing us to be off? Sometimes it's very obvious and sometimes it's far more subtle. We have to really think and spend some time saying, okay, what got me to this way? In my practice where I help people get better, that's one of the things I spend a lot of time on. They'll say, well, I'm just depressed. I'll say, well, what's going on? Then go back to when you began to feel depressed. What was going on in your life? And I can always, I'm saying always, find the precipitating cause. Even people that struggle with a natural depression that's genetic have a predisposition to think negatively. These negative thoughts make them sad. I mean, if you think about it, the most depressed person can be at a movie and it can be a wonderful movie. And during that 90 minutes at the movie, they may be very happy. It's not until they leave the theater that they start thinking about the things that cause them to be depressed. Mind you, I'm not saying they don't have a predisposition towards thinking negatively. It's just the thoughts still need to be there. And don't ever say, I'm just depressed. Spend some time, look at it, even talk to other people. What's going on in my life? What changed? What am I fighting in life that changed? 
that is causing me to be depressed because something's changed. I mean, it could be just the way you were thinking about things, but something changed. And we want to look at how did I interpret that change in a negative way? Now, the fourth one, I think we're all going to be familiar with, but it is a big one. Once we realize that we're thinking about something that is causing us not to be happy right now, we have to ask ourselves, is there anything I can do to change this so that I'm in a better place? So a simple example, going back to the vacation analogy, would be when we wake up and we realize, oh, I'm not happy today. Why is that? I'm on vacation. Then the next thing, as we do our investigation, we discover that, oh, today's the day I go home. And I'm not really happy about that. I really like this vacation. So then we go to, again, step four. Is there anything I can do about this? I mean, really, we need to ask that question because sometimes there is. For example, we may say, can I extend my vacation? It might be a possibility. Or we can say, well, I know when I was flying over here, there were some really good movies to choose on the flight home. I'm looking forward to watching them. And when I get home, I get to see my friends again and really enjoy them. And if I have pets at home, it will be great to see them again. We can focus on the things that are coming in the future that we're looking forward to. And though we may miss the vacation, in life, there's just always something beautiful to be with. Can we be with that? We have to let go of the fact of we can't hang on to the vacation forever. And we do need to go back and work so we can go on our next vacation. So we focus on, okay, is there anything I can do about it? Sometimes it's just changing our thoughts. In four or five hours, I'll be on that plane. But right now, I'm going to sit out on the patio and have my breakfast and enjoy my breakfast. So much of life is asking ourselves, is there anything I can do? And often, often there is. So why would we fight this and be unhappy? It's actually pretty simple. We don't like step four, which is asking us, is there anything we can do? Because we like the way things were. We don't want changes. But life, going back to step one, is full of changes. Things are going to change. If we meet our soulmate and we fall deeply in love and we have the most blissful marriage, at some point, most likely, one of the two partners is either going to get sick or even die. And the other partner is going to have to deal with that. Life changes. Hanging on too tightly to anything causes us to suffer. When we acknowledge that life changes and I need to adjust to these changes, then life goes so much better. And it's so often easy to adjust. Let me use another simple example. We're traveling somewhere, like to work, driving in our car, and there's an accident. And we can tell by all the red lights in front of us that it's going to be a long time before we get to work. So life changed. We were expecting to go to work at a certain time. Now we're not going to get there. And we were expecting to sit in our car a certain amount of time. Now we're not. Because life does sometimes change. And that change can cause us distress, can cause us to be unhappy. So our responsibility, our choice next is to say, okay, is there anything I can do to make life more comfortable giving this new course that I'm on? Again, if a person gets divorced, could they get out there and start dating again and try to meet someone else that they love, maybe even better? If they lose their job, even at a job they may have liked, could they use this opportunity to perhaps go back to school and do something else or just find a different job they may enjoy more or it just may be a different experience? So much of life is to realize that our suffering comes from how we view things. And it doesn't have to be suffering just because of change. What causes us to suffer is that we don't like this change and we want it to stay the same. So when we fight the changes of life, we suffer. So a lot of times what we can do is just change the way we're looking at it and saying, okay, I may not like this, but I can make this work. There is just so many things that we can do when life changes to make it better if it's causing us discomfort. That's our focus. Our step right now is to figure out how to make this better. And the better may be acceptance. We just accept what is. 
because we can't think of anything else. We can't really change it. So we take a deep breath and we say, okay, I get it. This is the change that has happened. I may not like it, but I'd rather be happy than fight this. So I'm going to accept this today and then focus on living my life that's around me. Focus on the beautiful things in my life that are prevalent right now. Because we really can only focus on one thing at a time. If we're focused on the negative thinking in our head, we will be not doing well. But if we realize, okay, I thought of everything I could and I just can't come up with a solution to make this situation better. So instead, I'm going to accept it and then just live our lives. For example, if we lose our job, we may say, you know, I can't think of anything else to do. The job market's really poor right now and I can't apply. It's three o'clock in the morning and I'm thinking about trying to get another job. I can't get one right now. So I'm going to accept that right now I don't have a job. So what can I do? I can just get up and meditate for a while. I can read a book. I can perhaps just go watch a show. I can listen to a podcast. There's so many good things that we can do instead when we're stuck. And when we get stuck, or at least we say, there's nothing I can do about this right now, then we do something that does bring joy and happiness to our hearts. If you know me well, I would often say, just get outside, move the body and get outside. That is 99.9% a cure to almost anything. Being in nature, just allowing ourselves to take deep breaths can often cure any stinking thinking because that's what it's about. We get stuck in our thoughts. I know it really feels like this is a legitimate thing that I need to be upset about and stay upset about, but that's just not true. I can guarantee you there's someone on the planet that's going through pretty much what you're going through right now and they're okay. And that means that's a possibility. So what we do is we say, I'm going to find a solution, step four, to this problem. And if I can't, then I'm going to accept that this is just a change of life. I'm going to focus on other things that do bring me joy, since this thing that used to bring me joy can't anymore. I mean, let's use the analogy of a divorce again. We may have been deeply in love, and now we're going through a breakup or a divorce. Of course, it can be very sad, but we realize staying stuck in that sadness because life changes, which life does, and we didn't want it to, but it still did. That means we're fighting life, and if we keep fighting life, we're going to keep suffering. Instead, we say, I didn't want that to happen, but it did, and everything I can think about bringing that person back isn't working. So what am I going to do? I'm going to accept that for now, the relationship is over and I'm going to focus on making my life beautiful in other areas of my life because there's just always something beautiful to be with. So step six, the final step is the next day we wake up, we can say again, is there something I can do about this? There might be solutions that seem insoluble at three o'clock in the morning sometimes have solutions the next day. And when we have the energy and the time and the resources to work on solving it, then we focus on that. But when we don't, we let it go. So, so much of life is living in the present, adjusting to the changes of life and living well. And when we do this, we do have a happy life. So I want to go over one more time the six steps. And may I make a suggestion, actually write them down carry them with us until we got this and we got it and this is what we do each and every time we notice we're off so step one is to acknowledge that life changes step two is to say i feel off right now step three is to say what thoughts are causing me to feel off right now step four is can i do anything about it right now step five is if i can't do anything about it right now I accept what's happening. And step six is, the next time I do have an opportunity to do something about it, I'll give it another try. And that's it. 
we flow with life, we make the small adjustments all along the way. And as we get good at this, our lives go well. There's going to be change. But the one thing I've learned as humans, we are really good at adjusting to anything. And I do mean anything, as long as we don't give up. And as long as we're willing to let go of the things we can control and work towards changing the things we can. There often is a lot we can do. Sometimes there isn't, but often there's a lot. But the one thing we can always do are these six steps. And if we implement them throughout our lives, I really believe that we'll find that this step-by-step -step method for finding happiness in our lives will create and continue to create the happiness that all of us are seeking throughout our lives. Thank you for joining me on the Happiness Podcast. If you are finding these episodes helpful, I would love for you to share your experience with others. The easiest way for new people to listen to this podcast is just refer them to www.happinesspodcast.org. That's happinesspodcast.org. Or if you want to do more and leave a review, on that site you'll find a Yelp link, a Google Plus link, a testimonial link, or perhaps even the site you're listening to this podcast on. Often you can leave reviews there too. The reviews are an awesome way to encourage people to start listening to the Happiness Podcast. And until next time, accept what is, love what is. Do you ever wonder why some companies do so well, grow, and just seem to keep coming up with great ideas and keep expanding? While other companies are permeated with negativity, lawsuits, employee turnover, and just overall unhappiness in the workplace. Whichever corporate camp you find yourself in, or somewhere in between, the key to any company's ongoing success is to invest in and help their employees perform at their peak performance. There are very clear and specific things that people can do to perform well at work and in life in general. This is the focus of my podcast, and it's also the focus of my work. Being at the cutting edge of any market is sustained through investment, investment in training employees how to perform well. But sustained growth and productivity require specific psychological tools in order to continue to perform at peak levels. This is where I can help. I've been studying peak performance for over 30 years now, helping people all over the world. And there are very specific things that have to be maintained in order to sustain this level of performance. When companies invest in their employees, their employees are invested in them. Unfortunately, it's quite common for companies to be doing exceptionally well in the marketplace, but for unknown reasons, key employees make poor choices, leave the company, or start struggling and coping with stress-related illnesses. Companies that do well know their business really well, but human behavior works in mysterious ways unless you've been trained to understand the causes and cures of underperformance. If you're a forward-thinking company, perhaps it's time to think about giving your employees skills that may really help them perform well at work and throughout their lives. If you work for or manage a company and you're ready to learn the skills in order to survive and thrive in any market, in any conditions, or in life in general, I'd love to help. These are the skills I've learned. These are the ones I'd love to bring to your company. True lasting success has to be seen from a broader perspective, not just monetary. And if you're ready to bring about these changes, that's where I can help. To learn more, go to www.successbeyondyourimagination.com. That's successbeyondyourimagination.com. And whether we're at the doorstep of retirement or have many years to go, may we always be growing and be developing our skills not only as successful employees, but as successful human beings. <laughs>